I'm Debbie Morgan and I'm Director for Primary at the NCETM. But somebody just asked me, is this just going to be primary? Well, it's just going to be the principles of variation and it applies primary or secondary. So if you're secondary, it's, it's okay. It's fine um, as well. Um, how did I first come across variation theory? I came across because it, in the research literature, I, the Department for Education in my role as primary director said, go to Shanghai and find out their secrets. <laughs> so off I went to China with my suitcase. But before I went to China with my suitcase, I started reading the research literature to find out about um, mathematics teaching in China and why they were so successful. I knew they were successful, top of PISA. That's why the Department of Education was sending me. Um, but I didn't know very much. I'd read Leaping Ma, actually, so I had some inkling. But variation theory came out a lot in the research literature. And when I went to China, I then saw it in action. I shared it with teachers in this country and it's beginning to have a real impact. So that's what I want to just explain to you and give you some drawing on the research literature, drawing on my experience of watching Chinese teachers teach um, and sharing some things with you. OK, so that's what we're going to look at, what it means and what its potential is. And it does touch a little bit on memorization and deep learning, um, whether memorization is um, is, is, is conflicting or complementary to deep learning. Um, so the Chinese paradox. The Chinese paradox is that it's, it seems to be large classes, passive learners, and rote drilling. That's a stereotypical view of what teaching in China looks like. Um, but actually, how come they achieve so well? Uh, and one of the keys is its variation theory, which, to, which, which, which turns what could potentially be rote learning into deep learning. And it turns what potentially could be passive learners in large classrooms into thinking and engaging learners. So it's not the rote learning that we thought, we thought it was. And I just put this together, really, um, thinking about traditional teaching and uh, modern, more progressive teaching, whatever you might like to call it. And, and compared, compared the two with, with China. And what I would say is that China has characteristics on both sides. And I think that's our key. I think one of our difficulties in education is that we swing. And we sometimes swing too far. So in China, they're focused on procedural knowledge, knowledge of facts, but they're also focused on deep conceptual learning as well. And in fact, the two are not separate. The two integrate and one supports the other. The fact learning supports the conceptual learning, not least because it, it avoids the cognitive overload that we get um, when we're trying to solve a problem and we don't know what seven eights are. And, one of, and the research from cognitive science is, is that many of our children are not learning because they're on cognitive overload. Not that they can't, but there's too much. And variation does address that um, within its, its, its remit. OK, so the pow Chinese paradox is that actually deep learning does occur, and it does occur because good learning happens um, in it. Um, and Watkins and Briggs suggests that um, uh, it might be a misconception by Western scholars not really understanding what's going on in terms of Chinese children and their learning. So, as I said, the research attributes a lot of China's success to this idea called variation theory. And I'm going to address three aspects. I'm going to address the variation through the lesson where one activity is connected to the other with very small steps and very carefully chosen to create a really clear, small step, coherent journey through the mathematics. And the research literature talks a lot about conceptual variation and procedural variation, two different aspects. And I'm going to try and explain what they are and how we can apply them um, in practice. There's another slide that says it's the key um, to in China. So let's start to think about what it is now. I've got three quotes out here, up here. I'm not going to dwell on them because I think they're more easy to understand if I start sharing some examples um, with you. Except to say, 
variation relies very much on what stays the same and what changes. It's about keeping some things the same and changing actually very little so that we can make the links and make the connections. But there's three quotes that talk about that there. And here's an example, conceptual variation. Um, conceptual variation is a central idea and its, it's, its aim is to extract the essential features of a concept. So the word variety does come into this in some way, in that we need to represent concepts. Just get rid of that for a minute to see the pictures. We need to represent concepts in different ways. Not the, so I've represented fractions in 22 different ways. Now there are 22 two different contexts that children can recognize fractions. No, that's not it. It's I represent fractions in different ways so I can extract the essential elements of what a fraction is. And this is a, a page from a Chinese textbook which struck me. It struck me because it, it's got three, what seemingly might be very different things on the one page, one, one exercise after the other. It shows the huge gap between those. But as we can see, they're all about fractions and they're all about equal parts of a whole. And so, and I certainly in primary, we very often, we don't normally teach fractions of quantities with fractions of areas. And I've never seen fractions of volume in a primary textbook. But they're here, why? Because I want the children to see in a variety of ways, quite a wide variety of ways, that this is about the same thing. Um, so that we do see variation, variety within that. Um, but of course, the key thing, why they're put together, I mean, we might teach those things, but at very different times, but by teaching them at the same time, then they're making the connections between them. Whereas it's taught at very different times and the connections are less <coughs> likely to be made. Um, okay, another quote from the learned who says it's a way that we're definitely mastering concepts. This is an interesting, so it's a slide that when the Chinese teachers came um, to, to England and they taught in our classrooms as they would, I kept emphasizing to them, I want you to teach Shanghai style. Let's just try it and see if it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If it does, it does. So let's just go for it. This was, this was a lesson I observed Chinese teachers in one of our schools in England teaching. And what we see here actually is there isn't a great deal of variety, seemingly. They're all shapes, all fractions of areas, and all pretty similar, divided quite neatly into equal pieces, and we identify the piece. So we count the number of pieces and identify the one that's shaded. Except for, you'll notice there's one different example, isn't there? The line. It's the line that stands out. And that's there deliberately. Not, not the hand goes, uh, Miss, I think you've got that wrong. That one doesn't belong with these. We're not doing that one today. It's in there to draw attention, to make them think, actually. Um, there's a famous writer, I don't think I've got the quote on the slides, but called Gu, who says, in designing these exercises, avoid mechanical repetition, but instead provide the opportunity to practice the thinking process. And if we think about the, act the practice activities we give children, very often, they're about practicing the method, something we've taught them, something that they now know and we want them to do it again and again and again and again because we want them to remember it, we want them to learn it. But instead, there's something, uh, but, uh, but then children become mechanical. Oh, I'll just do it, just do this one, and I do the same for this one, I do the same for this one, I do the same for this one. This variation makes them stop and think, oh, this one is different. Let me get my head around this one. It must be about the same concept, but the concept's been, um, exposed differently. Um, so that example up there, it's still an equal part of a whole um, within that. So it's remaining essentially the same despite the apparent changes. And that's the key to learning mathematics, isn't it? Recognizing the same thing in lots and lots of different contexts. Um, so the practice is representing one math concept in a number of different ways, looking for multiple perspectives to gain that deeper understanding. 
It's a nice example, and I, I saw this in action. I saw a Chinese teacher teach this, um, and and this is what happened. And I bet, get, bet you can guess what happens. Um, so shading two thirds, children shaded in two. Yep, can do that one. One quarter, one. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm getting the hang of this. I'm getting the hang of this and getting into this. Four shading four. What do you think they did for the last one? Shaded in two. Yeah. So that is thrown in there. That variation to say stop. Think, don't get into mechanical um, mode. Because all the children were doing here, they weren't actually dealing with fractions. They were colouring in the numerator. It says to, and children pick up on that, don't they? They pick up on the easy ways to do things. And often that can be the superficial. And so they say, stop being superficial. Go a bit deeper, think about the numerator and the denominator. Um, in that, in that last example. And the other thing I thought about, you know, we know that Shanghai teaching is whole class teaching. That's what mastery is trying to develop, including everybody. Often what is worse in our classrooms, very often we would give these three type of questions to what we call in primary children in the red group. And we will give those, those type of questions to children in the indigo group. So therefore, the children in the red group are engaged in the superficial learning. And it's only children in the red group that give the opportunities to go deeper and get sustained learning and embed depth.